Hey everybody, uh, so today we're just going to go over a few things really quick, rapid fire succession, nothing too specific, just kind of broad strokes. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the function movement follow target, which is essentially kind of like parenting something to something else or like gluing it, but you can change the speed at how fast it goes so it can kind of lag behind something or it can snap directly to it. Uh, so there's some fun stuff you can do there. And I'm going to show you a really, really basic version of that. So we've got our function here. Got some features you can look at at your own speed. I'm going to drag a box out. And I'm just going to parent the box to the follower. And then the way that we're going to get this box to um, stick to it, we're going to make sure that this is kind of like in the origin spot. Because if you parent the cube like over here for example like this far away and you want it to follow the zombie it's going to be following it from over here uh same with the player so what we normally do is we put it at the origin or something like that close to it uh for the object and um the origin point for the zombie might be a little different than the player so it might snap to here on the zombie, but then for the player, it might snap down here. So um, you just kind of have to play with that and figure out what your preference is for that. And let me just show you a really basic version of what the snapping looks like. Um, we're going to have the player touch a trigger volume. So I'm just going to drag a quick little trigger volume out. And we're going to have on first enter, uh, we're just going to have it target that, and then um, once it's activated, it follows whoever activated it with um, this checkbox over here called Use Instigating Entity. And Instigating Entity is basically whoever turned it on or triggered it from a set of relays or something like that. So if the zombie could touch the trigger volume, it would follow the zombie, and if the player touches it then it'll follow the player and obviously you would want to set up the trigger volume to allow monsters uh, and zombies so I, I can actually show you both I can show you me and then I can show you the zombie so um, what's gonna end up happening though is this is going to push against me because the cube is bigger than me um, so when it gets to me it's just gonna push me uh, so let's just go ahead and take a quick look see how fast this actually moves in the default settings so when I touch this, you can see it's just pushing me pretty crazy fast. Uh, so what we can do is, oh, let me um, show you, I guess, what the zombie looks like. So we'll allow monsters, and I'll turn him to not stationary anymore. So zombie's going to come at me, and then the cube is going to push him away. <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, let me move him back a little bit further so we can see it happen in real time. So zombie's coming at me, he hits the trigger volume, and the cube's like, nah, bro, I'm sorry. Uh, which is pretty dope. I'm actually going to be making something similar to that. Okay, so, then you're like, what else can we do? Well, we can slow this down. So, move lerp time. You can actually speed this up so it happens instantaneously. So, if we set this to, um, like, 0 0.01, it'll happen pretty much right away. Uh, and I'll just show you that real quick. Um, we might have to mess with like one or two more settings for that. But as soon as the zombie hits it, it should just bloop. Now, that actually happened so fast that it's now stuck inside the zombie. Or the zombie's now stuck inside the collision. Uh, and he's kind of wandering around like a Goomba almost, which is pretty funny. Um, and you could do all kinds of things with that. It's not just brushes. You can parent... Um, let's parent some particle effects like what we can do a steam effect that's just on and looping uh we'll parent that to here and i'll have it rotated or something um we'll start again now that should also work uh for um, the player as well if i touch this now i think it'll snap to me um, and you can see that the puff of smoke is on me which means, oh, and he touched the volume, so let me try and touch the volume back again. Zombie. So you can see the smoke is is above me now. So that's just like one thing you can do. You can also do that. And you can see the shadow of the box. Um, and you can actually see it uh, on the minimap. Uh, okay, so you can parent things to that, and it'll parent 
itself to other things based on how you do it. Now, like I said, you could do anything to activate this. It could be a button press, like on press of button, uh, follow this thing. Um, so let's see what it kind of looks like when you start messing with um, some of the settings on it. And then that will be where we end the video. So I'm going to press the button and then we want it to follow me, but we only want it to follow me um, on, I don't know, let's say, let's lock the, the Y and just have it follow me on the X. Um, just press the button uh, and now it kind of mirrors me in this location here, which is kind of cool. Um, there's some neat things you can do with that. Uh, let's say we only want it, uh, or we also, you know, we could do the Y as well. And now you've got this thing that kind of follows you in a kind of cool way when you jump around, it kind of mimics your, uh, your movements. So you could attach like a laser to that and have the laser uh, kill something. Uh, so we could have the player maybe doesn't start with uh, I don't know, a pistol, and we could put a laser beam on here and rotate it this way, um, and then we would parent it, and then maybe we also wanted to turn on once the player hits the button, and uh, let's see, actually don't want it to kill the player right away, so maybe we'll do, um, we'll put it on this side, <laughs> uh, so we should be able to see it, and... All right, let's try this. So hit that, and now there is a laser moving over here. I need to, um, oh, I can't get by this when it's on the Y as well because it just follows my movement. So we'll lock it on the Y, play again. And now um, I'm gonna jump over it and I have the, uh, Oh, yeah, this is a bad idea. <laughs> Anyways, so you get the idea. Uh, you can do fun things like that. And now if we really want to like go really crazy and kind of have some weird fun with it, um, I'll do one more thing. We'll uh, just to kind of spark some interesting ideas. Uh, we'll do a look at target. Now what's, what's going to happen here is we're going to parent the cube and the laser uh, to the look at first. And then the look at gets parented to the follow. Uh, and what that's going to do is um, the cube will now look at whatever we tell it to look at and then it will still follow the the rules that we've got it set up so um, what we're going to do now is we're, not, we're just gonna leave that I think I'm gonna undo the vertical and just have it spin around sort of like in a flat disk versus it looking up or down um, so we're going to do that and we're also going to have it, uh, what we'll do is I'm going to put a trigger volume down and when the zombie gets close, uh, we will have the zombie trigger the laser to turn on, allow monsters, not allow players. And another thing we can do is we'll just parent the trigger volume to the cube and when the zombie gets close to the cube we'll have it look at the zombie and kill it so uh, do, 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 use instigator and then we grab this and do that as well so that should do it it's pretty straightforward and yeah let's give it a shot see how it goes we just need to make sure the zombie walks to the cube. Alright, zombie walks to the cube. There he goes. Now he's killed the zombie. So, there's some fun things you can do there. And I uh, just want you guys to experiment with it a little bit. Like I said, the instigator thing is really interesting. You can really mess with that a bunch and have fun. There's another thing you can do. I'll just do one more crazy thing that's going to probably... Um, just open up a whole new set of possibilities. So what we can kind of do, there's another function here that I think you guys would have fun messing with this is get entity. So what I'm going to do is, um, 
I'm going to set up a... Uh, so what get entity does basically is it looks through the parameters that you have here and it grabs whatever... It grabs basically any AI that meets the parameters and feeds it through this on success. So you can make the cube look at the entity from the get entity. Uh, it's pretty neat. It's like a it's like a trigger volume that's just everywhere and is looking for specific things. So if we were to just move this out of the way for a second and we wanted this to look at whatever uh, whatever was the get entity, uh, we could set that up like that. I'm just going to delete this and what we'll also do is on success we'll have it turn the laser on and when it doesn't find something we'll have it turn the laser off and we'll have it deactivate the um the uh i think it deactivates the yeah the the look at uh we could also have it deactivate the follower so i'm gonna do a thing where so normally what you could do is like on death of zombie you could have it uh, rotate to the next uh, thing or follow look for the next follower um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hook in a little uh, relay sort of loop going on here so I'm gonna do start repeat motion uh, repeat every one second and every one second it's gonna look for the properties of the get entity um, so what we're gonna do is allow monsters only and uh, we'll just do chaos and we're just going to pick the closest one to this uh, function. So if the function's over here, it's going to pick this guy. And if the function's over here, it'll pick this guy. Uh, but we're going to parent it to the mover, uh, to the follower, so that it's always just whatever's closest to our cube. And every time the mover uh triggers a, a loop it's going to check to see who's alive and who's the closest and then that will feed the information it'll grab this guy for example now and it'll say all right look at this guy and turn the laser on and then when that guy doesn't exist anymore it'll find the next guy find the next guy um until there's nobody left and then when that says there's nobody left um it'll stop and we can do another thing too well we'll just Keep it pretty simple. This is simple, right? Yeah, this is simple. Um, and I'll just have that start on. So it's going to start just doing its thing right away. Um, let me do play from here. No clips. You could see it a little bit better. So it killed that guy. Then it's killing that guy. Now it's killing that guy. And it should try and turn to get this last guy. Oh, there it is. Cool. Nice. All right. That was a real basic tutorial on how to get some things going. Now, if I were to not have this just looping constantly, uh, what you're what you're going to get is if I press this button and I, you know, have it trigger once, it'll only do the first look at the first guy that it encounters, and then it'll stop. Um, so there are other things that you can do uh, to keep that to keep the the loop going um like i said you could wait on on death and then have it do this to like a very specific group of of units um and the good thing about that is if you had let's say if there was a wall here and you had more units on the other side of this wall that just hadn't really spawned yet uh or they were spawned in and waiting for you to go through a door um the entity get thing won't grab somebody through the wall um yeah that's like a whole nother thing <laughs> but for now we'll just keep it real simple that's like that's like the basics to prevent that kind of thing from happening in the future you're gonna want to use an entity collection so you would end up putting all of these guys uh, inside a collection and saying only target from this group and you can do that um, through the get entity and then you can um, you can have a function here that's like entity collection and when these guys on spawn 
uh, on spawn, you could just add them to the collection. And it'll only search for those guys. I, I feel like I just have to keep showing you guys. We'll, we'll just keep going down the rabbit hole. So, uh, zombies uh, apply, okay? Now, um, I've named that entity collection, and now I can go in here and say only pick from zombies, okay? I'm going to put some units on the outside here, and I'm going to leave them monster stationary. Now, uh, I'll just hide that for a second. What I want to show you with this is... Um, I'm going to put that loop back on, and we're going to turn this off because like we're just doing some fun stuff it doesn't have to be super accurate start on repeat okay uh what's going to happen is let me clear that this is going to grab everybody here and it's going to kill the fiends over there as well um once these guys see how it goes to them Let's say they're in a different part of the level. You don't really want that, right? So what we end up doing is we put we put our zombies in the room into a collection group here. Um, and then we put that entity collection inside the get entity. So when it's searched for when it's searching for the zombies and only looks inside the group that the zombies are in and now it won't won't uh, attack the fiends over here on the side as you can see it's only grabbing from those guys and when those guys are dead then that's it now i can show you if i add this guy to the group it will at least kill him as well Now he's the closest one. Uh, it should go back over here and kill that guy, then that guy. So that's pretty cool. All right. So that about wraps it up for this crazy advanced tutorial. Thank you for watching.